Howdy y'all, today is May 6th. I uh, ran the trail out with a bunch of goodies on it, brought out my dad's generator, and we're just gonna power up the whole barn and see what the lights look like. So the lights in the barn are great. It's really nice. My dad is working on that one above the garage door raising it now. Uh, then it should be good. Um, I don't know if you can see the tiller out there. But uh, along the road there I was working on putting in some flower beds. So I'm just kind of waiting for everything to die and then I'll till it one more time just to make sure it's good. So while I'm waiting on that, I figure I will uh, start planting some tomatoes. Tomorrow it's supposed to rain so it'll be a great time to get them in. Also have some mater magic. I actually use this on my tomatoes at home, put a couple of these in there. So I'm going to plant, I have a few different um, chicken fertilizers that I'm going to plant in with these tomatoes, but this should be enough for one row. So these are the wildflowers I'm going to be planting. My aunt actually gave me the three boxes for my birthday and my mom just surprised me with these when she was ordering all her tomato seeds. So now I'm just shaking them all up and uh, they're gonna sprinkle them out. So, super nice to have these. Thank you guys. I am striking out on chicken injuries right now, you guys. So I came in and this chicken was laying underneath the water and uh, not doing anything kind of weird so uh rooster hopped on her she jumped up and then i saw there was some blood on her hind end picked her up and um i can't quite tell where the blood's coming from it might be some sort of thing uh, might be egg bound i don't know so i've got her cornered in here while i'm finishing up chores and then i will uh figure out what's going on with her so this injury is called a vent prolapse so basically when the hen's trying to lay an egg her reproductive organs push out with it um there's not a great outlook for this unfortunately uh she's already kind of lethargic i caught it in plenty of time the chickens didn't really pick on her at all which is great so i washed her cleaned her up and um it's about the best i can do at the moment um i've got her in the shed with the other injured chicken and I'm going to keep her in the dark um, as much as I can uh, because I don't want her laying any eggs right now because trying to lay an egg with a prolapsed um, vent is uh, it's not good. So it would just push out those organs and uh, she really just needs to take a break from that and get a chance to heal. Um, but unfortunately, it probably won't end well or um, it's just not a good outlook when something like this happens. Thankfully, it's still all inside her. Um, there's nothing hanging out. So she's got that going for her. So it's not gonna get infected on the outside from debris or anything. Um, so we'll see, I'll keep an eye on her, keep her clean um, in the dark and it's about all we can do. Um, if anyone's interested in seeing what a prolapse vent looks like, um, I'll show you. And then if you don't want to see it, I'll tell you to look away and then tell you when you can look back. So anyways, if you don't want to look, look away in three, two, one. So that's what she's dealing with. So when she pushes that egg out, that prolapse is also going to be pushing out. So. Keep an eye on her, uh, fingers crossed that she makes it, but I don't have too high hopes on this. Today is May 7th. Let's let these chicks out so they can explore the whole coop. I put the pearl white in a little crate for now and they'll swap places. Just getting a little too cramped in here for these guys.
Chickens are out running around. Got a lot more rain last night than I thought, which is great. Uh, so that's good. Got the wildflowers in yesterday and a few tomatoes. So that's a good feeling. Americana coops nice and calm with the old rooster pinned up. So, so far so good there. And an update on all the injured chickens I have at the moment. The white one, she's good. It's a big thick scab. So I'm slightly worried about putting her out there. I don't think it would bleed to the degree that it did, you know, two and a half weeks ago at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and take her and Rusty out today. That way there's two new ones. So there's not just one single focus. Uh, so the chickens don't pick on just one. So be a little chaos for them, which probably be good for a little bit to get their minds off of it. Um, so they're going out today. Also update on the chicken with the, that was scalped. She's doing fine. I haven't put anything on her today. I'll do another um, antibiotic ointment on her tonight. I don't want to just keep lathering stuff on. Kind of want it to breathe a little bit too, but not dry out. So, so far so good there. She's doing good. She laid me another egg just a little bit ago. Um, and then the buff Orphington. Honestly, when I opened the door to the shed, I thought she would be dead this morning, but she wasn't. She was doing fantastic. She uh, was eating, drinking, and is a lot more alert than she was yesterday, so those are good things. She actually wanted to go outside, so sat with her in the grass for a little bit. She's still not doing a lot of walking um, or trying to get away from you or jumping or anything, but she's at least doing pretty good considering uh, what she's going through. All right, I've already checked the cedar hive. They're good. They haven't touched their second box I added on, the middle box. Uh, I only put theirs on Wednesday. These guys I put on last weekend, and they're a really active hive, so I have a feeling they've done something with it. I can see just the bags of pollen hanging off of the bees, even from this distance. So um, last time I put the box on, they were kind of up in my face, so I'm going to go ahead and light a smoker for the just-in-case. So last year I didn't really use the smoker. I used it once when I first got it, just playing around with it. And then I think I only used it once in the fall when the bees got a little testy with me. Um, but I never really needed it. My bees were really calm. Uh, plus I didn't really want to have to use the smoke anyway. So bees naturally live in, you know, trees or wooded areas. And when they sense smoke, that's when uh, they freak out. They think the forest is burning down, their home's about to be, you know, gone. So what they do is they hunker down, start grabbing all the honey, just mouthfuls of it, resources. That way they can get ready to leave if they absolutely have to. So I don't like having to alarm the bees to that degree, but it does calm them down because they recede into their box. So it makes them easier to work with. Um, it's kind of like a fire alarm because you know it's not really burning down and the bees aren't really completely running off at this point so uh, I'm gonna light it just in case they get a little testy with me but uh, yeah I don't know hopefully I won't have to always use smoke with them I just like not having to use it everything's pretty wet out here and the only dry thing I had was a feed bag so I'm gonna light that up and see if I can get something going White Hive was totally fine, no issues. They haven't done too much with that middle box that I put on uh, last week yet, but uh, there's a ton of bees in there. They're really noisy. All right, so the Pearl White is healed up enough that I think she's all right to be out here. Rusty's in the blue crate, so I'm gonna go ahead and Integrate them in with these guys. The hens are terrified of him. It's just so weird. They all freaked out and ran when I put them in. The other chicken's in here too. Um, I don't remember which one she is already. They all look so similar. But um, happy that both of them are out. Just a lot of chicken moving going on today. First night out is a little rough for them. They're not happy. They don't really know what to do with themselves, where to go, or anything. I popped this out here to see if they would uh, 
cuddle up in there if they wanted to. I might put a couple on one of the shorter roosts out here, see if they prefer that. But uh, they just gotta figure it out tonight. Howdy y'all, today is May 8th. Uh, opened the door up and there's a mouse in here, so chased it around. It ran under the wood under there, so there's no getting it out. So right now I'm just getting set up for a beehive. Rusty and the other pearl white I put back out here are all doing just fine and they're doing great. So this is the buff with the prolapse. I just washed her rear end and she's doing fine. Get her uh, outside just for a little bit. Uh, she's in the top part of my parents coop so she doesn't get a ton of light. She has not laid an egg yet which is awesome. She did uh, just take a couple poops. They're kind of runny uh, but I didn't see the actual interior of her sticking out which is also a good sign so she's doing better than I expected um, so just keep an eye on her see how it goes I'm kind of doing an every other day thing now that I have two chickens that are down so I'm washing her butt every other day and the day I'm not washing her butt I'm doing the hurt chickens neck and putting antibiotic on it so so far pretty good schedule and routine I'm only gonna leave her out for a little while here and then put her back up First look at the Buff and Marin Coop without Rusty. I imagine some of these bald backs will uh, start to heal up because there aren't two roosters in here, so that'll be good. Good morning, everybody. Today is May 9th, and I've checked on all the injured chickens. Everybody's still kicking and doing fine. I uh, also checked on the Speckled Sussex. They're doing great. And last night I got a note from the fifth grade teacher saying, I probably have to take all the chicks this Friday because they're just getting so big they're running out of room. So I really need to start working on another coop because I don't really have a spot for them just yet. Uh, but anyway, today uh, I've got to go pick up my nucleus colony. It's about an hour drive, a little over. So I've got to get the beehive built or at least one box. So that's what I'm going to work on this morning. So I got another cedar hive. I just like the look of the cedar. Plus, uh, I don't have to paint it, which is also another bonus. Especially today, because that would have taken some time. And this came, oh, a couple days ago. So it's a full hive. This one has two deeps and two supers, which is nice. So I won't have to buy any more for this colony. Uh, this is a queen excluder. I don't really use those. And, um, let's see what this is. Let's get the top. And then put some frames in here and yeah. So it's gonna take a little bit, but I'm gonna start working on this. I love these cedar hives. Not only just the look, but the pieces fit together so well. There's a ton of wax on here, which is also nice. It's pre-drilled and they give you screws instead of just nails. So overall, really like this. I just got it off Amazon. Body is done. That took just a couple minutes. Super quick and simple. I've got the pin nailer out. Uh, this is really the easiest, best way I've found to put these frames together. So I'm going to do these. Frames are done. Now let's pop in the foundation. Foundation is done. Let's load up and hit the road. simple. They're in a little wooden box here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get them out to the farm, pop them in, and then I'll probably feed them tomorrow. Today's a pretty good day, so I doubt they'd be interested in it. And honestly, all week looks pretty good, so I don't know if they're gonna want any sugar water, but figure to help get them off to a good start. Might as well. We are back. So there was one bee that got out on me in the car, but that was it. That wasn't too bad. They've got them screened in there. Probably a little uh, angsty being all shaken up and driven around. But uh, this is what they're going to be moving into. So I'm going to let them settle for a little bit, work on the chickens, and then uh, I'll go ahead and transfer these frames into the new hive.
So I left the house and realized only after I got here that I don't have all my bee supplies with me. I did grab my suit and gloves, so I had that. But as far as my hive tool, um, I didn't bring my spare. So I'm just gonna use a screwdriver and figure that'll pry everything up good enough to get the top of this box off and get the frames in. guys came in plastic foundation so that's what is in the middle there it's good to put it in the same order so the bees uh, aren't extra confused on where the resources were and just get turned around so uh, no use for this anymore I'm just gonna let the bees find their way over uh, I saw a little bit of everything I saw some bees actively hatching I saw some brood I saw some larvae saw some eggs saw some pollen and some honey so They've got a pretty good start. There wasn't as much honey on there as I thought, so I might go ahead and feed them a little bit. But uh, once again, I just don't know. It's such a nice day. They're probably not gonna wanna drink uh, sugar water, but uh, it might help them get a little quicker start. So I'll bring some out for them tomorrow. I've got some nice red clover starting to bloom. The bees are moved in. It didn't take them long to figure out to move next door there. So there's a few bees that are have their butt facing outwards and they're flapping their wings really hard. I don't know if you can see that too well with the shadows there, but basically um, all these field bees are flying around and they're not used to this territory. So the bees that are in the hive are fanning the scent out. That way the bees that are flying around can find the colony again. Got some more tomato planted, which is great, but uh, not quite done with the row yet. Getting kind of late, so I want to go check on all the other chickens yet. This chicken is looking pretty good, so I put the antibiotic on there, couldn't find a spray. Um, so I found one that was a um, triple antibiotic ointment that's on the go, so it pumped out in smaller streams, which is great. So I hold her like this for about 10 minutes or so, and then her body heat kind of melts that ointment on there. I don't want to let her go right now because she would probably shake it right off. So if I just sit here, you can already see some of it's melting on her a little bit. So just keep her calm and uh, everything's looking really good on her. So she's healing up nice. out today it is May 10th um, just got word that the power company will be out next week to uh, get my power going so that's good I mean at least I have a time frame um, I brought some plants from home the ones that I started a couple months back I brought about nine of them out so I'm gonna start hardening them off and then get them in the ground here soon I would like to finish um, planting the ones I bought from the store today I have a few more to do uh, I also really need to get on this chicken coop because I got to pick up the chicks from the school on Friday and I don't have anywhere to put them so gotta work on that today for sure a couple of them that one in the middle there is already wilting it's only 75 degrees out and it was a pretty quick trip over here so my dad's working on the chicken coop got a little start on that uh, building it on the trailer because there's really no flat space to work with unless we go upstairs and use the second story of the barn so trailer's just the easiest thing right now so while he's working on that i'm going to work on planting the rest of this tomato row and just keep crossing things off the list
My dad got the frame done on this chicken coop here. Uh, it's basically the same dimensions that uh, we made the other coop. This one's maybe three, two or three inches taller just because these boards here, uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, the other one was actually supposed to be a little taller, but I messed it cut up, so we just made all of them a couple inches shorter. Um, so yeah, can't really do any more on this yet because uh, I just need some material. So instead of running out now, I'll be out there later tomorrow. Pick up everything, need to finish that and get that done tomorrow, which will be a good feeling. I've got all the tomatoes planted. My dad just hopped on the mower. He's gonna do a little grass cutting and also bring up some dirt. And then with that dirt, I'm going to finish putting it around my tomatoes, also packing in the last corner of the barn over here. And then I think my dad's probably just gonna cut some grass after that. So getting some stuff done today, it's feeling good. See how these tomatoes are doing over here. Not too bad, maybe a little wilty. These are all black crims. Um, instead of these solo cups, since I have all the other pots with the drainage holes in them, I'm gonna go ahead and transplant these really quick too, just so I can give them a good soak and not worry about water sitting in there. And then the bees are doing fine. They're nice and active. Uh, I need to close up their entrance there a little bit though. Howdy y'all, today is May 11th. I'm sorry, I was kind of bad about recording this chicken coop progress here, but just kind of crunched on time, so just trying to get it done as quick as possible. But let me give you a quick walkthrough of things that have gone on so far. So difference on this coop is instead of using the um, metal conduit, went with some PVC. So it's got a more round look to it versus the straight up V where I was tying it in in the middle. Uh, this is all the same here. It's a couple inches taller. It's about two foot though. Um, this hardware cloth here, uh, actually they didn't have a two foot roll, so I had to get a four foot roll, cut it in half, so it's slightly annoying, but not the end of the world. Um, to keep these in, just ran a screw through there. Uh, that way they don't pop up on you. Uh, you're gonna wanna pre-drill them so that way it doesn't uh, just kind of feel like it bottoms out on you. Uh, difference on this coop is put a little ledge here instead of just a full door so that way the chickens don't just hop out on you. Uh, this coop's also, I'm just trying to get it done as quick as possible. Um, so that was kind of the same deal with that coop is just get it done as quick as possible so it doesn't even have a roost in there or a feeder or water yet and uh, I doubt I'm gonna have time to get that on this coop but the next coop, that's the plan. So uh, anyway, the dimensions are the same, length and width wise, I think it was 10 by six, no, 10 by five. I don't know, I have to get a tape and look. But um, anyways, that's what we got so far. And then for the door here, just uh, put some little clamps to hold this PVC to it to make it a little sturdier. Uh, put a couple boards on the outside so that way stapling it was a little easier. I don't think I did that on the last coop, just because I was worried about weight. Um, didn't square this one up. We built it on the trailer on in there, so uh, figured it was pretty square, and it was square because this wouldn't line up if it wasn't, so that uh, is all good. So next steps on this, uh, I gotta get some chicken wire over the top, and then I'm just gonna start zip tying things. Uh, still have to do the nesting boxes along the back here and then make a door. So hopefully get this pretty close to done today. Tomorrow I'll put some finishing touches on it. I wanna get the Americanas in here um, and then the chicks 
from the school that I'm picking up tomorrow will go in the Americana's coop. That's the plan. I think I have to pick those chicks up about 3.30 though, so I don't know. I might be kind of pushing it on time still. But uh, anyways, that's uh, what we're looking like so far. little progress update for you guys. Um, most of the netting's done, got the nesting boxes started. Unfortunately, um, I thought I had a board long enough to make the door, but it's about five inches too short. So I have to go buy a piece of wood for that. But uh, all the netting and stuff's done. I still have to do the dividers, but uh, that'll be quick and simple. Uh, it's just this front part is still open here. Got to make the door and then another little bit there. So it's uh, coming along, feeling pretty good about it. I'll definitely be able to put some chickens in here tomorrow, which is a good feeling. but that coop is done. Just gotta slap a tarp on it and uh, get a whole piece of hose so I can pull it easy. But other than that, it's completed. Uh, my mom and dad came out and they were helping, really helped a lot, so thank you guys, I appreciate it. Uh, so now all that's left to do is put chickens in it, so I'll do that tomorrow. But uh, anyways, I still gotta do all the chicken chores, so uh, let's get on it. All right, let's get these buffs, marins, and Americanas done. Um, when I got in, I had a little package from the Arbor Day Foundation. Uh, I donated, uh, 10 bucks back in, I don't know, February or something. Somehow I got on their mailing list, uh, from something I did a few years ago. I don't know how they tracked me down, but they did. And, uh, anyways, I asked for a donation and then, uh, they'd give you 10 trees. Uh, I was like, okay, that sounds cool. I could use... 10 little tree starts for the woods because I knew that's what I was going to do. And uh, they said they'd be mailed in April. April came and went and I figured, well, I guess it was just a scam. I thought Harbor Day was better than that. But uh, the trees actually just showed up today. So that's cool. I'll show you guys that package tomorrow. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and get these chickens done for the night. And all the chickens are taken care of so tomorrow is going to be a super busy day I will check in with you guys when I can uh, actually it's already tomorrow it's uh, the 12th already I think that's uh, after midnight but anyways uh, tomorrow's gonna come bright and early and then uh, yeah just a lot to do tomorrow so it's an, gonna be an exciting day though moving chickens around and everything Good morning, Americanas. It is moving day. I'll be so happy to get these guys out on pasture. It's gonna be great. So I've been running around all morning trying to figure out the logistics of how I'm going to do today because it's gonna be kind of busy. Uh, I grabbed this cage, which is what the scalped Americana was in. I put her in a cardboard box for now because uh, I need these to move chickens. <laughs> I'm gonna leave the rooster here. I just can't put him back with these hens in good conscience. So uh, he's gonna stay behind. Um, and then the chicks from the school project are gonna go in this coop uh, this afternoon. So lots to do, better get on it. Chickens are loaded up, rooster's running around. Uh, they were pretty stressed. So uh, 
imagine I probably won't get great egg production the next few days. Um, just grab their food and water here, and then we're off. That mouse that I uh, found in here the other day, we did catch him. Hopefully he didn't have any friends. I put two mouse traps where he was hanging out because he ran under this wood pile over here, which is tough to get him. Yeah, not mice, so. Uh, I think it was just the one, but once again, it's not completely critter proof because you can still see some light. Uh, it's on the to-do list. So the only thing I didn't have for this coop was the tarp. Went and grabbed that, so I'm gonna zip tie that down. I was at Tractor Supply grabbing a bunch of things. For the garden, I got some T-posts and just miscellaneous stuff. So I went ahead and grabbed a bag of shavings for their nesting boxes. They'll probably kick it out and it'll kind of fall through. So I think I'm gonna do the same thing I did with this coop and get um, those mats and see if they like it. Got quite a few eggs on the ground, so I don't even think they've hopped up there. There's quite a number of them. So uh, I'm gonna get that set up and then put those eggs up top. That way they figure that out. It's pretty cool looking at these chicks. Um, you can definitely tell the ones that are from the Marins. Uh, the Marin ones are all the light gray with the uh, buff Orpington influence on their face and their feathers. So. Marin and Buff Orpington got oh, quite a few of those really. Um, all the darker ones are Americanas. There is one that is a spitting image of Hoot when uh, he was a, or she was a little one. And they got a couple buffs that are straight buffs. I don't really see much uh, rusty influence on any of them. They're, uh, they all look really good though. They only lost one. There was a Buff Orpington uh, just failure to thrive kind of thing. It died uh, within 24 hours of hatching. I uh, just couldn't stand up or do anything. But other than that, everybody else is okay. She said one of them does have a toe that's crooked, but uh, it walks fine. So here's one that's a buff Marin mix coming out. You can see uh, the buff Orpington in the face there. Super cute. These guys are uh, really sociable because the kids have handled them every day a little closer for you. Uh, a lot of them have names. I don't know all of them. I heard a handful of them. The one that I'm going to pay special attention to is Sunshine. She's a little buff Orpington hen. It looks like potentially the only buff Orpington hen I have. Uh, there's still three chicks at school. There's one buff Orpington that a kid got super attached to and wants to take home. So I left that one for that kid plus two others just so that chick had a friend. And then uh, I'll probably be picking them 
the other two up on uh, Monday or Tuesday. I just didn't want one chick to be left alone, uh, so make sure they have a buddy. But anyway, these guys are good, and they're going to stay out here in the Americana Coop and just grow on up. So the one chick named Sunshine, uh, when I went to pick him up, a kid had her sitting on the desk and he was just petting her with one finger and she was out. So I guess this kid um, has been holding her every day since she hatched and they've just formed a really close bond. And uh, he made this awesome little leg band for her. It's um, stretchy, I guess it's rubber bands, but it was... Uh, super crafty um i think it's gonna be a little bulky on her leg um at this point because they just grow so quick at this age that she would outgrow this really quick too um she's pretty easy to identify though because <clears throat> she's the only buff orpington hen that i got out of the two batches that the elementary school did so i'll keep an eye on her give her a little extra special love but uh definitely a sweetie. So I didn't really want to put this guy in the chick coop because if a little chick stuck its head in there, curious, uh, I don't know what he would do, but I have a feeling he probably wouldn't be very nice. So I stuck him over here with the Buffs and Marins. Everybody's currently scared of him. <laughs> Doodles hasn't done anything uh, yet, but I imagine he'll want to challenge him a little bit. So yeah, but that's where he's going for now. Um, one of these days, he will end up in the freezer. I just don't have time today. So, got the chicks done, which is a great feeling. Now I got to get the cage back to um, the Americana that he hurt and uh, get her settled in again because she's been sitting in a cardboard box all day with a screen over the top. So, I am going to go get her done now. Getting quite a bit of action here from the cedar hive. A lot of bees just flying around the entrance. Um, a lot of times they'll just uh, hatch. Got to get their bearings straight and uh, we'll check out the hive. They call it an orientation. Uh, just that way they get familiar with their surroundings and the area. So pretty much all the chicken chores are done, which is uh, really nice. I just got to wash the poopy chicken butt later. But um, I wanted to go back out to the farm and uh, work on the garden a little bit as well as plant the trees that I got from the Arbor Day Foundation. So. I'll show you guys all that. So I thought I only got 10 trees, but turns out I got 12, so that's cool. I'm going to go ahead and take some flags, mark out where I want them. Uh, this is kind of handy. It gives you the details on them. I want all the flowering ones toward the front because I want to see them. Those spruces I'll probably put toward the back. Those will also help buffer the wind a little bit. You probably can't see my flags too well, but uh, there's one straight out there. One kind of right in the middle here, one right here. There's a bunch in the back, you just can't see them. But got all 12 of them kind of spaced out. And uh, I don't know, it's getting kind of late and I'm a little tired. Um, I'll probably get a couple planted though. I don't know about all of them. So first thing I'm gonna do is weed eat out a little spot around each of these flags. That way uh, the grass isn't growing up around these little twigs because they are definitely twigs. So. I'm going to go ahead and do all 12 of those and then start digging the holes and popping them in. 
weed eating is done. That was pretty quick and simple. So yeah, I'll just take a moment to appreciate this clover though. It is up to my knee. It's amazing. That is some beautiful stuff right there. There's a couple really good strips like that that are just super full and thick. I would love to get a cow on that. Okay, hole number one here. I'm thinking we're gonna do a crab apple. So I got one of those and the paint color is purple. a little purple in there so i'm gonna dig that one out <laughs> yeah there's my crab apple it looks like a uh, little twig i picked up off the ground um, there is not much to it It'll be dead and gone by the time this thing gets it big but um at least future generations can enjoy it so i'm gonna plant this here um in the first hole so when you walk in to the little uh area here that's what you'll see and there it is, my sergeant crab apple. It is, um, yeah, it's just about my hand length. So that is a very baby tree. Uh, if I don't step on it or weed whack it, that'll be a miracle. I'm gonna put this flag a little closer and hope I don't kill it. All right, let's hope uh, some of these are a little bigger. There are a few larger ones in here, especially the spruces and some of the bigger trees, but this little twig here, let's uh, just hope it doesn't die. So hole number two here is on the right of the walk. Just planted that one on the left of the walk. So I want something kind of pretty. I'm thinking a dogwood. So I only got one of those. That pink color is white. Let's hope this one's a little bit bigger. Um, is that white or bird poop? I can't tell. Let me dig it out. It was, in fact, white and not bird poop. So this one I have a little more hope for. At least it has a better root system. It's a little taller. It's got um, a little leaf on it. The other one did have a bud on it, but it was so dang small you could hardly see it. So I'm going to get this one in the ground here. And there it is. So it's getting kind of dark out. Uh, so I only got two done today. I'll do the rest of them tomorrow. I'm gonna go hang out uh, around a bonfire that just got started. My parents are here. They were working on um, their tomato row. My mom's tomato row. My dad was helping out. And uh, we're all just gonna hang out for a little while.